A little too warm to be running the furnace around here. Temperatures into the 60s again, but the price we're paying is that increased rain chance. We do have scattered showers around the triangle, little pockets here and there of slightly more intense rainfall, but not enough to cause significant issues. Still, if there are some showers still hanging out for drive time this evening, then it's probably going to be a longer commute for a lot of folks heading home from work. And the drives tomorrow, both in the morning and in the evening, are looking messy. Plenty of rain on the way. This shower activity gradually lifting a little farther and farther to the north, and there's more rain out to our west. It's going to continue feeding into our chances. Scattered showers the rest of the afternoon. It's not going to rain everywhere all the time. We'll switch over to future cast here, show you how it plays out. Still some showers out there by 6 o'clock this evening with the steadiest rain along the Virginia state line. Kind of a break in the action, at least intermittently for the late evening hours, but by midnight, the heavier rain to our west starting to get its act together, and it is going to move in. It is going to rain out there for the Thursday morning commute. Some of the heaviest rain moving in right as we head towards the peak of rush hour Thursday morning, of course. No worries about severe weather with this round of rainfall, and there's not going to be enough rain to cause any flooding problems yet at that point. But this is going to saturate the ground and increase our flooding threat later on in the day. For the rest of today, we're going to see more of what we've seen so far is just a lot of cloud cover. Had a few glimpses of blue sky early this morning from RDU, so similar perspectives from our other cameras. Now, though, the tarmac is wet, and yeah, roads are largely wet as well. 64 degrees the temperature at RDU, 63 degrees in Smithfield, where the showers have mainly moved off to the north. But you had more rain earlier in the day. Everybody's gotten in on the action. Looking out from Sampson County, you're at 68 degrees right now in Clinton with still gray skies overhead. Other temperatures, low to mid-60s around the triangle, not a whole lot of area. 64 Raleigh, 63 in Durham and Chapel Hill. Just a little warmer farther south. 67 Fayetteville, 69 degrees right now in Grays Creek, almost up to 70. You're more likely to get into the 70s farther south of the triangle this afternoon. We'll reach up to the upper 60s in the triangle, which is still 15 degrees above average. Cooler air does make its way into our northern counties late this afternoon and this evening, but that's going to get pushed back up to the north as we head through the day tomorrow. We're only going to drop to around 60. We'll start warming up already before the sun comes up tomorrow morning. And do we warm up enough for a severe weather threat? That's the big question. Farther south, where you climb into the 70s, much more likely that you're going to face that severe weather threat right at 70 in the triangle, which is warm enough for an elevated risk of severe weather, but it is right on the borderline. If we stay any cooler, then that would really help us out. Futurecast now showing more of a break in the action that lasts a little bit longer, even for the triangle, which lets the atmosphere kind of charge up for this main line of thunderstorms to move in from the west. That's going to be around tomorrow sunset, late afternoon to the early evening hours. This line of storms would produce a damaging straight line wind threat, but it's also more heavy rain on top of that already saturated ground. And it's going to continue raining as we head through Thursday evening, Thursday night, and even into the early hours of Friday morning. Friday morning's commute might be a mess as well. Flooding becomes more likely the more rain falls in that saturated ground. Finally, this gets pushed off to the east as we head towards about mid-morning on Friday with the heaviest rain out towards the coast. Here's that increased severe weather risk for the Sand Hills, an enhanced risk, which is level 3 out of 5, while the rest of central North Carolina is in that slight risk. More of a borderline threat, again, just depending on how much we warm up. Still could go either way. Damaging straight-line winds and an isolated tornado the main severe weather risks, but also flooding, especially in these red colors, where you're looking at the potential for more than 3 inches of rain tomorrow and tomorrow a night, and that's just too much in a short amount of time, mainly along and west of I-85. Likely that we're going to have some flash flood warnings issued, and certainly possible that we'll have flash flood warnings issued for other parts of central North Carolina as well. Temperatures will drop once the rain moves out on Friday. Only 50s for highs, but hey, that's normal for this time of year. Still 50s over the weekend, and mostly dry Saturday and Sunday during the daylight hours. Best chance of weekend showers will be overnight Saturday night. Another stretch of unsettled weather is on the way by the middle of next week. Stick around. More news coming up after a quick break.